All types of predator explained. What began as a 1987 thriller film has now expanded into a film franchise, video games, comics, and even novels. The Predator franchise boasts a wide variety of alien species with its main focus on the titular hunting species, the Yauchas. The Yauchas, or Predators, are apex hunters hailing from the planet of Yaucha Prime, situated in the far reaches of the galaxy. Their purpose in life is to hunt, and their motto is, the deadlier the prey, the greater the honor. These hunters are not interested in sickly or easy prey. They look for battle-hardened warriors from different species or other deadly predatory species to hunt and collect their heads and spines as trophies. Even though they seem single-minded, there is more than enough variation within this species to warrant further examination. While the Predator franchise is chock full of several unique predators, in this video we are taking a look at some of the most intriguing types of predators we have come across within this franchise's films, books, and video games. While some of them have been banished or defected from Yaucha Prime, others are hybrids of some sort, and one even takes on the appearance of comic book favorite Archie Andrews. That's not all. There's a predator type that's all technology and gives its wearers an even chance of fighting the deadliest of opponents. Interesting stuff, right? So, without further ado, let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Predator King Similar to the rarely occurring and extremely mysterious Xenomorph King, the Predator and Alien vs. Predator franchises have often referred to someone, or rather something, called the Predator King. Clearly, the name is self-explanatory. The Predator King is practically the leader of several immensely large Yaucha clans, but some argue that he's the leader of the entire Yaucha's race. Now, someone of this stature is bound to have powers and weapons way beyond what we usually encounter in the Alien vs. Predator lore. Much like the Iron Throne from Game of Thrones was constructed of the swords of fallen enemies, the Predator's King Throne is made of xenomorph skulls that the King took as trophies. It is said that the crowning jewel of his throne is the crest of a Queen Mother Xenomorph. Interestingly enough, there have been several references to the Predator King in the comics and other resources. In the game Alien vs Predator 2, there is mention of a Yaucha called Prince who responded to a distress signal from LV-1201 and arrived there to help his brethren. Interestingly enough, Prince not only survived the campaign, but had also arrived on a ship that was more magnificent and elegant than we usually see. It is believed that it was a ship of his father, the King. If the game ever had a direct sequel, it could have been possible for us to see Prince as the next King. Next in line has to be the Kenner action figure from the 90s, which was reimagined by NECA in 2016. This king was sitting on a throne that was made up of several trophies, including the skull of a xenomorph queen. Although called the Predator Clan leader, his attributes force us to see him as the Predator King. But hey, if there are so many Predator Kings, one of them has to be a hybrid, right? Well, in the 1993 comics Alien vs Predator, Deadliest of the Species, we are introduced to a deadly hybrid creature which was formed by the splicing of human, yaucha, and xenomorph DNA. This hybrid monstrosity was called the White Hybrid or the Predator King. The White Hybrid King has the deadliest characteristics of all three species, making it a force to reckon with. Not only could he speak, use many weapons, and stand in an erect stance like the humans and yaucha, but like Xenomorphs, he was the leader of a eusocial society, possessed an incredibly bony frame, and came with two sets of jaws. Ancient Predator Anyone who's done a bit of digging into the Predator universe has to know about the Rage War trilogy. Here, we are introduced to a several thousand years old Predator named Kalakta. He not only fought against humans, but also against a fearsome race called Drukathi. Kalakta was well respected amongst all Predators, and is often considered the race's king. Likewise, any predator who's lived long enough, presumably a thousand years, and has survived numerous hunts and battles, is often considered a king. Oftentimes, ancient ones also serve as advisors to mighty clan leaders, and also as philosophical and spiritual leaders. Now, it is largely unknown if Yauchas are a religious or god-fearing race, but from what we know about their code of honor, it seems that it may have something to do with a superior entity. However, this is just my personal speculation and nothing more. One thing that I cannot stress enough on is that the Yaucha lifestyle is extremely dangerous. I mean, they live to hunt and hunt to live. 
So for someone to live a thousand years of this life is more than a commendable feat. As far as their appearance is concerned, they possess graying dreadlocks, several battle scars, facial quills, etc. Notably, the dreadlocks of younger Yayuchas are black. Furthermore, more ornamental weapons reflect higher status. Take a look at the mask of Ancient Hunter Lord. I'm sure you're able to see what I'm talking about. Having said that, Ancients are often seen without any mask whatsoever. In the Yaucha society, Ancients also sometimes form a council, which is practically the leading institution of the entirety of the Yaucha race. Their only quest at this age is to preserve the sanctity of the Yaucha lifestyle and ensure that no Yaucha breaks their code of honor, and if someone does so, they must be eliminated. Lastly, although an ancient's wisdom, experience, and age warrant deference from everyone below them, it would be unwise to assume that age plays any role in their strength. They remain formidable despite their old age. In fact, they become more skilled at what they do due to years of practice. Classic Predator, Jungle Hunter No matter what one says about who the deadliest of all predators is, the status that the Jungle Hunter Predator from the 1987 film cannot be matched. What John McTiernan did back in the day remains to be an eponymous creation, and its proof is the upcoming film of the franchise Prey. In the 1987 film, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Dutch Schaefer was a military man who was tasked with finding and rescuing a group of hostages who were presumed to have been taken away by rebels in the jungles of Guatemala. Now, you should know that Arnold's character matched his physique. Dutch Schaefer was a man who had more testosterone and adrenaline in his body than blood, but Dutch had no idea what he was getting into. The Guatemalan jungles were plagued by an entity that the locals referred to as El Diablo. No estoy segura, no sé. She says the jungle. It just came alive. He would especially arrive on Earth during hot summer months and make trophies out of men. He had killed several locals, but it was the Americans he probably shouldn't have killed, and the casualties included the members of an elite mercenary group led by Dutch Schaefer. After much to and fro, and an arduous jungle trek to reach the extraction point, Dutch learned that there could be no safety. He used his military skills and set up several deadly booby traps to beat the Predator, the mighty jungle hunter. Interestingly, the Jungle Hunter was an honorable Yaucha and played by the rules. Upon noticing that Dutch was a brave and ingenious fighter, the Predator threw away his weapons and engaged in close quarters combat with him. Yet Dutch was far inferior to the Jungle Hunter's monstrous physical strength. In the end, Dutch managed to pin the alien hunter down, but in a last ditch attempt to kill Dutch and safeguard the Yaucha technology, the Predator activated his self-destruct device, but Dutch survived the explosion. It was because of Dutch's remarkable fighting skills that humanity was seen as a more formidable and respectable prey, and subsequently, this newfound respect made the City Hunter arrive on Earth. Interestingly enough, it was a member of the Jungle Hunter clan that was captured by Berserker Predator and his mates in the film Predators. Lost Tribe Predators City Hunter the Lost Tribe Predators were a clan of predators that came to Earth to hunt humans. Among them was the City Hunter, who created an elegant mess. Much like the Jungle Hunter, the City Hunter arrived in Los Angeles in the sweltering summer days. He found his first prey in a group of trigger-happy criminals who were going about their regular gang war. But the locals saw this as an act of courage and dubbed him the Psycho Vigilante Killer. Why Psycho? Well, when the police found the bodies, let's just say they were shocked to their deaths. From the beginning, the city hunter took a keen interest in one detective, Harrigan, as he witnessed Harrigan use his wits to outsmart and kill several of the gunmen. It wasn't long before Detective Harrigan could feel that someone or something had been stalking him all this while. Meanwhile, the Predator kept on killing several criminals and others. <laughs> Danny Glover's Harrigan proved to be as skilled a game as Dutch Schaefer from the previous movie, all but with differences in their modus operandi. In the end, the Predator found itself fighting a heavily armed Harrigan. The fighting and struggle soon reached the roof of a building. Stuck in the building, the City Hunter had had enough and wanted to destroy Harrigan by triggering the self-destruct device, but Harrigan severely injured the Predator using one of his own weapons. With the wrist gauntlet now gone, the Predator couldn't do much. 
In the climax, the two of them met in the city hunter's mothership, where hand-to-hand -hand combat took place between them. After almost losing his life to the Predator, Harrigan managed to slice open the city hunter's stomach. The scene and the movie deserve way more love than what it is given today. For me, it will always remain the second best Predator movie ever, no matter how many new prequels or sequels hit the screens. The First Predator and the Hishq-10 have you ever wondered how it was that the Predator race came to being? Or what the evolutionary stages were? Well, the Alpha Predator named Kyle is your answer to that very question. NECA had released a line of extremely unique Predator and named it the Alpha Predator, and they were kind enough to attach a small but crisp piece of lore behind their figure. So, according to this piece of literature, the Aouchas were primarily an ancient race called the Hish Q10. Over a period of time, the Hish were attacked by an insectoid alien race called the Amengi, who were largely parasitic in nature. They would conquer other planets after exhausting all the natural resources of the previous one. Interestingly, the Amengi were on a relentless pursuit of technological innovation, and it included biotechnology. When they reached the planet of the Hish, they found that the hosts were essentially animalistic and beastly creatures with little to no advancement in the field of technology. This ensured that the Amengi could take full control over the Hish and face no consequence whatsoever. All of this somehow reminds me of the colonial structure that prevailed for centuries and how the South Asians and Africans were forced to live under dire circumstances. Eventually, the Amengi enslaved and ruled the Hish for thousands of years, subjecting them to slavery and cruel experiments. Furthermore, the Amengi would dine on the Hish and use them as game for hunting. Hish hunting soon became a popular sport amongst the Amengi, and it wasn't long before the sport was commercialized with betting, gambling, and every other entertainment. Initially, the Amengi sought out the naturally larger and stronger Hish for hunting. But to make the competition more dangerous and exciting, the Amengi started to change the genetic structure of the Hish to make them even stronger and more formidable. But what the Amengi didn't know was that they were transforming their slaves into tough opponents by turning their body parts into deadly tools. Many centuries later, there emerged the largest and fiercest of Hish, and he was not only feared by his own kind, but also respected by the Amengi themselves. This was an albino Hish called Kail. Although a mighty warrior, he was as smart as he was strong. He offered loyalty to the Amengi, secretly eroding them from within. He soon forged an alliance with the other powerful Hish and rebelled against the oppressors. After killing one of the powerful Amengi, Kail took its face and wore it as a trophy, and the others followed him. Those who were left were put into slavery or slain. The Hish eventually evolved into the Yauchas. As far as technology was concerned, they started using those that the Amengi had left behind. Super Predators Once again, much like the Predator King, the name Super Predator needs no explanation. These guys are considerably bulkier and stronger than their regular counterparts, but in addition to that, they have more advanced armor and weaponry. The Super Predators first appeared in the 2010 film Predators and became a hit among fans and creators alike. The Super Predators served as the wardens of the Game Preserved Planet, which was an entire planet used to bring in individuals from various species, including humans. These individuals serve as worthy opponents to the Super Predators. Furthermore, the Super Predators are known to have massive blood feud with the Jungle Hunter Clan. In fact, the Super Predators had captured one of the Predators from the Jungle Hunter Clan, only to crucify him alive. This Predator later went on to be known as the Crucified Predator and helped the humans on the Game Preserve planet, but ended up losing his life to Berserker, the leader of the Super Predators. But why do these two clans share such enmity? Well, the Jungle Hunters believed in the Yaucha Code of Honor, and wouldn't hurt a fly if they didn't have to. On the other hand, the Super Predators were very different. They hunted for the thrill of hunting, and their primary objective was to test their own physical and mental capacity against the deadliest of opponents from across the galaxy, after creating new and enhanced pieces of technology to become stronger and deadlier. These traits essentially bring them under the category of Bad Blood Predators. The Super Predators in the film consisted of Falconer, Tracker, and their clan leader Berserker. However, there are several other Super Predators, one of them called the Four-Armed Predator, which appeared in the comics. Berserker was a child prodigy and earned several trophies within a short span of time, but he eventually grew bored and started his quest for a more thrilling game. This is what led him to get into the whole Game Preserve Planet adventure. Tracker was an unsociable loner, while Falconer was a tech geek. 
Unblooded predator. When a yaucha is born, it is called a youngling, suckling, or pup. The pup remains in this stage of life for a few years until it becomes old enough to take part in the hunting training. At this stage, it needs the constant support of its elders to survive or else it will die. Once it is old enough to participate in the training, it is called an unblooded predator. However, an unblooded predator goes through one of the harshest training exercises to be able to take part in a hunt. When the unblooded attempt to become young blood, it is supposed to get its locks plated in a long and agonizing public ceremony. If the little Yaucha shows any sign of pain, like tears in the eyes, or even if it flinches to the least degree, the entire process is undone and restarted. All the unblooded predators are trained by a more experienced Yaucha, oftentimes an elder. It is in this stage that the young Yauchas develop characteristic features as well. After the training has been completed, the unblooded predators rise to the ranks of a young blooded predator. Young Blood Predator After the completion of the training period, an unblooded Yaucha goes on to become a young blood predator by taking part in hunts. However, the game used for these hunts is not as ferocious as Xenomorphs at least not initially. Usually, groups of three young blood predators work together under the supervision of a leader. However, in a few cases, lone young blood predators attempt the hunts themselves in their own personal capacity. However, they are not considered true hunters or adults who can take part in mating. The status of an adult Yaucha is achieved only after they successfully kill a Xenomorph, and it's a jackpot if they manage to take down a Xenomorph Queen. We have had the opportunity to see a lot of young blood predators on screens. For instance, under the Whaling Station lay an ancient Yaucha pyramid, the new hunting ground for the young blooded Scar and his brothers. Blooded Predator An unblooded predator's arduous journey comes to an end after getting blooded, which is a task so difficult that only a few predators manage to achieve it. We as children yearn to become adults, right? I mean, we anticipate the time when we could do the adult things like voting, drinking, moving out, getting laid. Well, the Yauchas cannot choose a mate until they get blooded, which is basically a coming of age ritual they simply have to perform or die trying. So what is it exactly? Well, getting blooded means that a young blood Yaucha should slay a xenomorph and mark his forehead with the acidic blood of the xenomorph. Once a predator gets blooded, he gets to have what we humans call a wife and mate with her. However, there is little to no evidence that the male Yauchas are monogamous, while on the other hand, the female Yauchas have clans such as the Widow Clan, signaling that they are monogamous in nature. Interestingly, most of the more famous comics from the Alien vs Predator franchise revolve around young predators getting blooded. Oftentimes, elder predators would come with their hunting party to certain planets and unwittingly unleash a horde of xenomorphs on their unfortunate denizens. For instance, this is what happened in Ryushi, the planet where Machiko Noguchi, the human predator, was sent to look after a ranching colony. Even in the 2004 film Alien vs Predator, Scar had come with his brothers Celtic and Chopper to get blooded. The others died before they could paint themselves with xenomorph blood, but Scar did. However, in the end, he didn't survive because of a mortal blow from the Antarctic Queen Xenomorph. Having said that, his legacy went on in semi-zombie mode, as he got transformed into a Predalien because of the facehugger which had previously impregnated Scar. Elite Predator Well, elite predators are ranked just above the blooded predators in the Yaucha society. These gladiatorial beasts are often the ones who help the young blood predators get blooded. Above the elite in the ranks are the clan leaders or elders. Elite predators are truly a force to reckon with and have enough strength and agility to take down even the deadliest of xenomorphs, including the Praetorian xenomorphs, who are second only to the xenomorph queen. Of course, more experienced and skilled than their blooded colleagues, the elites have proven their might time and again. For instance, the elite predator from the Dark Blade clan, Scarface, was able to take down the mighty Borgia Industries all on his own. Scarface massacred several members of street gangs who had just used the advanced Yaucha technology to create several weapons. Ultimately, Scarface avenged himself and showed his prowess to Hunter Borgia, a man who is known to have drunk Yaucha blood as a child. 
As far as the movies are concerned, the elite predator by the name of Wolf arrived in Gunnison, Colorado, which was then plagued by an alien infestation. He easily took down several of the beasts, and only a juvenile predalien queen managed to stand her ground against him. Having said that, he dealt enough damage to the abomination and had enough time or directional will, he would have slain her as well. In the end, both Wolf and the Predalion were nuked. So you see, elites pursue prey that is not staple or the simple, blooded predators. Elites often go for abominations like Predalians, bad blood predators, etc. Did you know that there is an entire clan of elite predators called the Elite Clan? Dark, a member of this clan, was sent by his elders to BG-386 along with a predator named Wolf, and one more. Bad Blood Predators It's true that the Yauchas hunt members of other species that they find to be worthy opponents, but sometimes, a predator involves himself in simply killing others, rather than hunting honorable and worthy prey. However, they are not a race of sadistic or animalistic beasts that kills anything that moves. I mean, they are not mindless creatures like the Xenomorph, who are only concerned about increasing their population. In contrast, the Predators live in a well-organized society and abide by a strict code of honor. This code restricts them from committing mindless violence or killing other beings just for the thrill of the kill. The difference could be understood from the feud shared between the Jungle Hunter clan and the Super Predators. So, when a Predator loses his code of honor and does things that are forbidden, he's considered a bad blood Predator. The Yaucha society holds bad blood predators almost as much an abomination as the Predalians, and the elders will do almost anything to eliminate the bad bloods, even if it means working alongside humans. Much like the elite clan, there's also a bad blood clan called the Killers. These were a fierce clan of bad blood predators who earned the title of heretics. They would only involve themselves in killing rather than hunting, hence displaying no honor. In Batman vs Predator, a bad blood predator became obsessed with taking the Cape Crusader's head as a trophy. The rebellious Yaucha killed anyone who came between him and Batman's head, and was ultimately slain by other predators. Elders those elites who have been around for hundreds of years gain a lot of combat and hunting experience. Soon, they rise to the rank of an Elder Predator, someone whose might and fury are unquestionable. These guys may not be clan leaders, but they are equally potent. The countless hunts over a prolonged period of time give them a unique set of hunting abilities and fighting style. It is not uncommon to see an Elder Predator with the crest of a Xenomorph Queen as one of his many trophies. I told you earlier that elites lead hunting parties of young blood predators to different places, but that is only on rare occasions. Mostly, it is the elders who take command of motherships and lead their young to complete the blooding ritual. Sometimes, the elders' role is to guide and counsel a clan leader, much like the Philosopher Predator. We'll get into the Philosopher Predator in an upcoming entry. Among the most famous elder predators is Greyback, who appeared at the climax of the film Predator 2. He was a multi-century old predator who gave Harrigan a flintlock pistol from the year 1715. The encounter with Harrigan was Greyback's second visit to Earth. He had once come to Earth as a young predator and helped a pirate captain named Raphael Adolini in eliminating his rogue crew members. The crew wanted to steal gold from a ship that belonged to the church, but that was against Adolini's will. He was soon facing the might of his crew, but Greyback was watching the events unfold. He came to help Adelini, and the two defeated everyone. In reality, Greyback saw Adelini as a worthy opponent and wanted to fight him in single combat. However, a fallen crew member killed Adelini after which the pirate captain offered the Elder Predator his flintlock. In the end, Greyback had found someone worthy enough to carry the pistol of mighty Raphael Adelini. Speaking of Raphael, did you check out our videos on the origin stories of the various Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle characters? Clan Leader The title of a clan leader is among the highest in the Yaucha society. As the name suggests, clan leaders sit at the head of a large group of Yauchas. If you are still here in this video, you know that clan leaders are mighty beasts with enough experience and skills to take down almost any opponent. So it is futile to talk about their powers. Therefore, we will rather talk about their responsibilities. A clan leader performs several tasks like overseeing other high-ranked predators, such as elders and elites. Younger predators seek to impress the clan leader, for his approval means a lot to the entire clan. Sometimes, a clan leader chooses a younger Yaucha to act as his squire. 
Earning such a place is considered to be of great honor and glory. However, the clan leader is also responsible for punishing those Yauchas who commit crimes or turn into bad blood predators. In such cases, a clan leader sends out an emissary of sorts in the form of an elder or an elite to eliminate the bad blood predator. He does the same when the reports of a Predalian reaches him. Oftentimes, a high-ranked Yaucha leaves his own clan and sets out to create a new clan so that he can become its leader. Because the Yaucha society is based on a strict code of honor, there's hardly any evidence where a certain clan leader was known to abuse his unquestioned power and control over his brethren. As far as mating is concerned, he often does it with a matriarch predator for life. Among the more notable clan leaders is Dashande, or Broken Tusk, who was a clan leader and led many unblooded Yauchas to the arid and harsh planet of Ryushi so that they could participate in their initiation hunt and slay xenomorphs. However, things went south when Dashande realized that the planet of Ryushi was inhabited by humans as well. Eventually, he joined hands with the humans, especially Machiko Noguchi, the human predator. Together, they fought off the alien infestation. I suggest you watch our video on the life story of Machiko. It's just thrilling! Predalian before the Alien and Predator universes merged, people often wondered what it would have been like if a Xenomorph facehugger impregnated a Predator. Fans got their answer in a live-action film, and they were nothing less than thrilled. A Predalien is deadlier than a regular Xenomorph or a Yaucha because the Predalien possesses the qualities of both these magnificent killing machines. One might say that the Predalien gets the worst of both worlds. On the one hand, the Xenomorphs love a Predalian doing the Queen's bidding, but the Yauchas consider them as the greatest abomination that has to be eliminated without a second's delay. This feeling of hate rises from the fact that the Predators consider the Xenomorphs their arch nemesis, and if one of their own gets impregnated by a Xeno bitch, well, things are going to get a little ugly. There have been several Predalians in comics, games, and movies. To know more about these monstrosities, check out our video with a list of 100 Predators. Fugitive Predator As the name suggests, the Fugitive Predator ran away from his own kind and crash-landed on Earth. It was initially believed that the Fugitive had come to participate in hunting, but by the end of the film, it became clear that he was in fact here on Earth to provide humans with a piece of advanced technology called the Predator Killer. According to him, the Predators would one day lead to the extinction of mankind, and the humans unavoidably would have to fight them. However, human weapons and ammunition were not strong enough to destroy Predators, and one could not really nuke populated areas if a Predator showed up there. Therefore, the Fugitive brought with him an exosuit to even the odds. Now, you may be wondering what the Fugitive was an individual Predator, so how could he possibly be a separate type altogether? I think that there are many more fugitive predators spread across the galaxy, which do not really appreciate the way of life that the Yauchas follow. One may even say that they are rather harbingers of peace. What I really mean is that only after the planets of the galaxy have these predator killers will the predators stop ravaging planets and hunting the races that live on these planets. Enforcer Predator, the Predator Police now that we have learned about the fugitive, it is imperative that we also talk about the predators that take care of these fugitives, namely, the Enforcer Predators, or the police of the Predator world. Enforcer Predators are sent in whenever a piece of Yaucha technology falls into the wrong hands, or when there's a rogue or bad blood predator that needs to be brought to justice. Clan leaders usually send the Enforcers, and while they serve the clan leader's goal, they are not really bound by any limitations when it comes to the use of weapons and violence. Furthermore, the Enforcers are known to have more advanced technology than their simpler brethren, and it is believed that they even undergo several biological transformations and mutations. The Infected Predator Have you watched the independent prequel to the Alien movies? Yes, Ridley Scott's Covenant and Prometheus. If you have, you also know the crazy things the black goo does to people. It is known to have powerful mutating properties. So what happens when the black liquid comes in contact with a predator? Well, we get an infected or a mutated predator. The first infected predator appeared in the comic Alien vs. Predator, Fire and Stone, which Dark Horse published in 2014. In the comics, a predator comes in contact with a black liquid and transforms into a bestial behemoth that goes through so many physical and psychological changes that he hardly resembles a predator anymore. The heavy mutations made him taller and exceedingly robust. Instead of a regular four mandibles, 
This abomination had eight of them. Not only that, he also developed an extra arm and had pitch black eyes, much like the engineers from the alien universe. But probably the most gruesome change that the infected predator went through was that he lost his mind. It turned out that he had developed cannibalistic tendencies and devoured his own kind. So the infected or mutated predators are a separate type that come into being once infected by the black liquid or black goo. Meta Predator. We came across the Meta Predators in the comic titled Justice League of America vs Predators. In the comics, an ancient race of highly advanced beings called the Dominators abducted a few predators with the intention of mutating them to give them powers of the Justice League members. The Predator counterparts that were formed were Wonder Woman, Superman, Plastic Man, Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern, Flash, Batman, Adam, and Aquaman. After the Meta Predators woke up from the little science experiment, the Dominators realized that they had committed a huge error. The Metas started killing their own creators, and only three of the Dominators managed to escape. However, the Justice League learned about the same and joined the party, eventually expelling the Meta Predators. Having said that, the fight was not easy, and Martian Manhunter almost lost his life. We have explored the entire story in our video titled 10 Deformed Yet Elegant Predator Hybrids Yaucha Species Explored in great detail. Do check it out! The Female Yaucha Little is known about the female Yaucha, who are formidable and fearsome warriors. Much like their male brethren, they also have a breeding season, in which female Yauchas will choose the most skillful males to sire their offspring, and when a female Yaucha has a mate, they tend to hunt with them, and sometimes even die together, binding them for eternity. Unlike the reckless males, the females are more calculative and careful, though the female Yaucha have been depicted in the films yet. However, in the books, graphic novels, and games, they are often portrayed as bigger than the males, while having spikes on their elbows and backs in some cases. If a female Yaucha isn't bigger than the male, she is about the same size or only a little smaller, but there is never a stark difference between the two, often hinting at the female being the stronger of the two. Although most hunters are male, female Yauchas have been known to hunt, but they are a minority within this particular skill. A few examples of female Yauchas from the old and new Yaucha lore are Big Mama, Sister Midnight, Bagoti, Machiko Noguchi, Valkyrie Predator, and several other such warriors. The Four-Armed Predator This predator was a massive mutant Yaucha with four arms that was dropped off on the Game Preserve planet sometime after the events of Predators. Four-Armed Predator was without a doubt one of the strongest Yauchas, and the reason for his mutation is unknown. It could either be a natural yet rare Yaucha trait or an intentional modification. But other than its arms, legs, and stature, the Four-Armed Predator resembles a normal Yaucha. This particular Yaucha carries certain tools for fight and survival which include wrist blades, a cloaking device, plate armor, and a wrist gauntlet. This character appeared in Predator's Surviving Life, where it was positioned to fight against Royce and Izzy, the remaining Game Preserve residents who had survived after the events of Predators. It was specifically sent to face off against Royce, and the four-armed Predator wasted no time in stalking this duo. Both sides put up a good fight, and Royce couldn't take on this particular Yaucha on his own, and enlisted help from Izzy, and after several attempts, they finally killed it. There aren't too many appearances of this character beyond this one. However, Kenner Products did create an unreleased action figure of the four-armed Predator. Exiled Predator We come across an exiled Predator in the 2020 video game Predator Hunting Grounds. Though it is not known when or how this Predator was exiled from Yaucha Prime, it is clear that he was able to adapt and hunt in the far reaches of Yaucha territory. He ended up on Earth and hunted the local warriors on the Pacific Islands. Out of deep respect for these warriors, he carefully interpreted and crafted armor from local raw materials like bones and wood for himself. The existence of this exiled predator indicates that there must be other predators that may have been exiled from Yaucha Prime and managed to survive on their own. Furthermore, in the 2017 Dark Horse comic titled Predator Hunters, we come across an entire clan of predators who were known as the Exiles. They got stranded on the Kehua Island after crash landing on it. Predator Killer The Predator Killer is a piece of technology that transforms into a suit of armor resembling a Yaucha once it is donned by a human. The suit was stolen by a fugitive predator and brought to Earth. He was followed by the upgrade predator, who wished to destroy the predator killer before it reached the hands of humans. 
The Predator Killer is equipped with three plasma casters on each soldier, each with an independent targeting laser and a giant cannon. It also comes with wrist blades that are longer than the standard ones. It is presumed that the Predator Killer suit has similar abilities to standard Yaucha body armor, such as cloaking and thermal vision in the built-in bio helmet. The Predator Killer is stored within a specialized wrist gauntlet with a retractable bolt on each side that is extended when the armor is not in use. Upon activation, the bolts retract and lock the gauntlet onto the wearer's hands as the rest of the armor materializes from it with a matter of seconds. The Hish Q10 The Yauchas were not always nature's prime hunters that we've come to know. They are descended from a much more animalistic race called the Hish. The Hish's planet was invaded by a parasitic insectoid race called the Amengi. Once their planet's resources were exhausted, the Amengi started to look for newer worlds to conquer and exploit. They were far more technologically advanced than the Hish, and managed to enslave them quite easily. They used the Hish as food and for hunting. Over time, they made physical changes to the Hish by giving them deadlier traits to make the competition fiercer. Eventually, these changes gave rise to an albino Hish called Kyle, who organized the Hish into a race of hunters that went on to kill the Amengi. After killing the most powerful Amengi, Kyle wore his head as a trophy and became the first or the Alpha Predator. It was probably Kyle who formed the conclave of Hish Kuten and ruled over the Hish for several years. Tracker Predator We get our first glimpse of a tracker predator in the 2010 film titled Predators. He was one of the two secondary antagonists of the film. As their name suggests, tracker predators are responsible for controlling the alien hounds that the predators use to hunt down their targets. The tracker in the 2010 Predators wore a helmet with tusks of some kind. He enjoyed the company of predator dogs over the Auchas and liked to deploy his hounds to test his prey's combat prowess. He believed predator dogs were not being used to their full potential and decided to breed and train them in the art of flushing and tracking, making them the perfect companions for his bloodthirsty species. Philosopher Predator Philosopher Predators are close to a thousand years old and are some of the oldest individuals within the species. Though they are not clan leaders, however, they do play a significant role within the community. They are spiritual leaders of the clan, advisors to the clan leaders, and even mentors to the eager to learn younger Yauchas. Some philosopher predators form the Council of Ancient and play a non-active administrative role in preserving the spiritual and hunting culture of their clan or species. Since they are the spiritual leaders, they are called upon to correct any grave atrocities committed against the Yaucha race. In the case of Yauchas, age does not weaken them with time. Rather, it seems that they grow stronger and more agile as they grow older, thus making philosopher predators formidable on the hunting grounds. Each clan typically has only one philosopher predator at a time, and this guy is usually their oldest and wisest member. Towards the end of their life, the philosopher appoints their successor, who is usually a similarly wizened Yaucha. The title of the philosopher predator and the mask is then passed on to the successor. The masks owned by the Philosopher Predators are modified uniquely by each Yaucha they are passed down to, and each Philosopher Predator's mask is thousands of years old. Although Philosopher Predators are subordinate to clan leaders in rank, their wisdom and age garner difference from their clan leader and the clan itself. This is why Philosopher Predators and Elders are often confused for one another by humans. Archie Predator Introduced in the comic Archie vs. Predator, the Archie Predator is unique to Riverdale. Archie Andrews and his gang go to Los Perdidos Resort for their spring break. Unbeknownst to them, a Predator had also landed in a forest close to the resort. The Predator follows Betty, Veronica, and Archie to their hometown in Riverdale, where he terrorizes Veronica and kills several others. A teen's father was a U.S. military general and recognizes the Predator from one of Betty's pictures. Their plan to capture the Predator using Jughead as bait almost fails as the Predator kills most of the men who were supposed to hunt it, including Archie. In a strange turn of events, Betty uses a healing gun on the Predator, transforming him into an Archie clone. Betty and Veronica then escort the Predator to Memory Lane in hopes of going back in time and saving Archie from the Predator. Somehow, they end up in an alternate universe where everyone is alive. However, a boy named Dilton activates a biohelmet by mistake, alerting a band of assassin predators. The Archie Predator looks exactly like Archie, with the only difference being that he is mute. He spends all his time with Betty and Veronica, and when the assassin predators arrive, he fights them, losing an arm and his Archie appearance in the process. 
At the end of this strange tale, the Archie Predator goes back to looking like a Yaucha, but donning Archie's clothes and continuing to hang out with Betty and Veronica. Viking Predator A Viking Predator is a male Yaucha warrior who hunted during the Viking Age. This name was primarily given to a massive Yaucha who had been drawn to the ruthless Viking raiders when they raided Europe. His armor was accented with metal plates and Celtic ornaments, chainmail, and fur, and his biohelmet featured horns. Over the centuries, several Viking warriors tried to lure this Viking predator into ritual combat. Fighting this legendary warrior would either cover them in a glory and honor them or send them directly to the feasting halls of Valhalla by dying in battle. Shaman Predator A shaman predator enjoys a higher rank in the Aucha society. Not much is known about their role within the clan, since the only shaman predator we've come across is in the film Predator 2. Some of his most notable traits were his sparse leather armor, longer dreadlocks, and fewer beads compared to his clanmates. He is also armed with a unique spear weapon that looks similar to a combi stick, but is also distinctly different. Heavy Predator Found an LV-1201 in the early 23rd century, heavy predators are taller and more muscular than the average Yaucha. They were first seen in Alien vs Predator 2, and then again in Alien vs Predator 2 Primal Hunt. They have alien skulls adorning their armor, usually on the shoulder or groin area. As the name suggests, the heavy predators are bulkier than their regular brethren, and therefore stronger. However, their massive bodies do slow them down. Some have even resorted to calling them Predator Tanks. Emissary Predator The Emissary Predators were two Yauchas from the same clan as the Fugitive and Upgrade Predators. These two characters were cut from the 2018 film The Predator. The Emissary Predators had defected from their clan one year prior to the events of The Predator to warn humanity about the upcoming invasion by their clan. In the initial draft of the script, these two would have lived in Project Stargazer base, and would have had their own private game preserve near the base that they used for hunting during the night. In the final showdown, they would have helped the remaining humans fight off the Upgrade Predator and other Predator-animal hybrids. However, they would have been killed by the Upgrade Predator. Golden Angel Predator Briefly seen at the end of Predator 2, the Golden Angel is an elder predator. After Mike Harrigan slays the City Hunter Predator, he finds himself surrounded by other predators who have turned off their camouflage. After the other predators have removed City Hunter's dead body and left, the Golden Angel Predator throws a flintlock pistol inscribed Raphael Andolini, 1715. The Golden Angel then departs with the rest of the clan. The pistol belonged to a pirate who had gifted it to another elder predator called Greyback in the year 1715 before he died. Mega City 1 Predator The Mega City 1 Predator was insanely tenacious and ambitious. Instead of setting his sights on one or a few select targets, he had decided to hunt the entirety of Mega City 1's Justice Department. The Predator landed on Earth near Mega City 1 and immediately killed two passersby before making his way into the city. Sometime before his hunt, he began suffering from an unknown sickness. He established his base of operations within the ruins of New York and headed to Mega City 1 to commence his hunt. There, he witnessed local juve gangs skirmish with each other before the street judges intervened. The Predator's curiosity was piqued, and he secretly followed the three judges. And when the right opportunity presented itself, he ambushed them. While he was able to severely wound Judge Rourke, Judge Dredd fended him off with his lawgiver handgun and tailed him to the complex. Here, the Predator ambushed him, but retreated as soon as Dredd's backup arrived. By the time the judges were able to track his location, the Predator was long gone, hunting his next prey at the shopping complex. He stalked and killed several judges and took their badges as trophies. Once he returned to his lair with a prisoner, he was tracked using a Psy judge who had investigated a vial of the creature's blood, thus establishing a psionic link with him. In the final showdown between the Mega City 1 Predator and Judge Dredd, the Predator was riddled with bullets, but still continued to fight. He managed to overpower Dredd, grab his Lawgiver handgun, and fire it at Dredd. The action activated Lawgiver's self-destructive failsafe and blew off the Predator's arm. Dredd used this opportunity to stab him in the chest, effectively killing him. Later, Judge Schaefer examined that it was possible that the Predator was aware of the booby trap and wanted to die. It can also be presumed that he had set such ludicrous targets for himself due to his illness and the likelihood that his time was soon coming to an end. This was designed as a parting hunt for himself by him. 
While we have only come across one such predator in the whole canon, it is safe to assume that other such predators ravaged by sickness may also exist. Since they belong to an alien species that was hunting culture, it was only natural that they wouldn't want to die in a sickbed but rather while doing what they're known for, hunting. Stoneheart Stoneheart was a bad blood Yaucha who had come to hunt on Earth with his clan brothers Longspear and Swiftknife sometime before 2030. In Neonopolis, they were cornered, incapacitated, and captured by Hunter Borgia and the Monster Squad. At Borgia Laboratories, the three clan brothers were tortured and augmented with cybernetic parts. During this process, they lost their higher brain functions. The three were put into stasis in the labs, with Stoneheart declared as the leader of the three enslaved brothers. Once Predator Scarface was captured in 2030, he was brought to Borgia Laboratories. However, he was able to escape and help several other Yauchas break out even before any experiments could be started on him. Hunter Borgia's daughter, Lucretia Borgia, released Stoneheart and his brothers on him. Scarface managed to kill Longspear and Swiftknife with ease, while Stoneheart retreated as Scarface was about to land the killing blow. As Scarface was making his way to Mother's Chambers, he was again ambushed by Stoneheart. In the ensuing duel, Scarface tore off Stoneheart's skull from his shoulders, finally giving the cyborg predator an honorable death. By the end of the game, all three of the enslaved predators were dead. However, it can be assumed that Borgia Industries would continue to capture and experiment on Yauchas, thus giving rise to more and more advanced slave predators like Stoneheart. Rage War Predator The Rage War is a novel trilogy that chronicles a wholesale invasion of human space by the Rage. The Rage was formerly known as the Founders. They were a dissident group of intelligent humans who advanced scientific experiments and drew scorn from the rest of humanity. They left the human sphere in search of a better life free from the restraint of human society. After several years, the group discovered an artificial planetoid and dubbed it Midsummer. There they discovered the Phase, a strange creature responsible for the construction of Midsummer itself. They also discovered dormant and waiting xenomorphs. This discovery triggered Beatrix Maloney to kill the original leader and take over the Exiles. She renamed them the Rage and returned to the Human Sphere to take revenge on their former persecutors. Before attacking the Human Sphere, the Rage also unleashed their Xenomorph army on the Yaucha to test their creations. Due to this, the Yaucha and the humans joined hands against their common enemy, the Rage, and their Xenomorphs. Kalakta is the leader of these Yauchas. He is an elder predator who is thousands of years old and is most likely a descendant of the Los Angeles hunting party. In the novel, he recounts the story of a time when the Yaucha were locked in a war with a species much more ancient than humans, the Xenomorphs, or the Yaucha themselves, the Drukathi. The Drukathi was an ancient race of aliens that used to inhabit the Milky Way galaxy. They possessed such powerful and advanced technologies that even the Yaucha were scared of them. The Drukathi used to breed and utilize Xenomorphs for their own ends. Kalakta also claimed that the phase was created by the Drukathi, implying that this ancient species was adept at biotechnology. During the events of the trilogy, it had been thousands of years since the Drukathi had moved to another galaxy. Hunter Borgia, Human Predator Hunter Borgia first appeared in the 2005 game Predator Concrete Jungle. He was born a sickly infant and would have died if he hadn't come in contact with the blood of a Yaucha called Scarface. Owing to his prolonged use of Yaucha blood, Borgia went on to live for more than a century. He grew up to become the CEO of Borgia Industries and reconstructed the city of Neonopolis after the predator Scarface had nearly destroyed it. His encounter with Yaucha blood made him obsessed with the alien species. He used his family's resources to create technology model after Yaucha technology. Over time, his obsession reached a level where he began experimenting on himself. Wanting to become the first ever human Yaucha, Borgia started altering his genetics. He reverse engineered the technology left behind by Scarface and used it to capture several Yauchas and experiment upon them. Upon noticing his actions, Scarface came back to Neonopolis to retrieve his technology. As soon as news of Scarface's return reached Borgia, he initiated the next phase of his research. He became the first subject of a program that would transform a human into a Yaucha-like super soldier. The procedure was interrupted midway by Scarface, who breached the facility and massacred everyone. The semi-completed experiment gave Borgia enough superpowers to defeat humans, but he was still no match for Scarface. The silver lining of Hunter Borgia's tragic story is that the technology to create a human predator exists and can be used in the future to finally run an uninterrupted successful experiment and create human predators. 
Sengoku Predator. Sengoku means fighting throughout the country. During Japan's Sengoku period, that is exactly what was happening, as it was an age of territorial disputes throughout the country. So it seems befitting that the type of predator is called Sengoku Predator, since the species is well known for its bloodthirst and zeal for hunting. The Sengoku Predator's armor is fashioned after the samurai warriors of the Sengoku period, with the main colors being red and gold. The Sengoku Predator has a much fiercer facial expression as compared to other species, as he holds a spinal cord in his right hand and a huge spear in the other. What makes him even more fearsome are the human skulls and skeletons scattered at his feet. Just like the Sengoku Predator, there are other predators that are based on a particular geographical location. The Jin is one such example. He was a lone Yaucha who lived deep within the foothills of the Hindu Kush in the eastern Afghanistan. He would partake in hunts within the region and kill jihadi soldiers and US personnel indiscriminately. Since he slaughtered the jihadis, he was deemed a guardian and savior by the local villagers. Ultimately, he perished after Swain lured him into a minefield, which killed them both. Predator Hound Predator Hounds are a group of non-sapient species primarily used by upgrade predator within the Predator franchise. They are chimeric canines created through hybridization techniques, with the base geome being an unidentified extraterrestrial hound species. Amongst other genomes, it carries Yaucha DNA as well, giving it a jarring resemblance to its masters. The most notable similarities between the two species are tanned hide, green blood, and dreadlocks on their head. One of the key physical features of the predator, the mandibles, are missing from the predator hound. Like upgrade predator, these hounds also possess exoskeletal armor that can deflect bullets and wrist blades that make forceful contact. However, they're not as strong as the predator's armor, since they can still be injured by a point-blank shot. Their internal organs are much softer and susceptible to damage. Quinn killed one by firing several grenade rounds in his throat and making it explode from the inside out. While they are quite similar to the hellhounds used by super predators, they are better suited for tracking and retrieval tasks, as they were trained and used for this very purpose by Upgrade Predator when he was in pursuit of Fugitive Predator. Temple Guard Temple Guard is a rare Yaucha Kest that takes up non-hunting roles. Also known as guardians or defenders, these predators act as personal escorts to a clan leader. Personally chosen on the basis of their loyalty and battle prowess, these Yauchas are tasked with their clan leader's safety and are expected to be in the constant company of their liege. They must give up the hunt and become a soldier instead. They are also responsible for protecting the clan leader from assassination attempts and may accompany them off-world as well. They also have inter-clan diplomacy skills and are tasked with preventing wars between clans. When a clan encounters an alien civilization, it is the duty of the Temple Guard to ensure that order is maintained. If required, the Temple Guard will put himself between a dangerous game and the clan leader. That was our list of the different types of predators within the Predator franchise. Let us know in the comments section which ones were your favorite. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone!